We've looked at how to find the domain and the vertical asymptotes, which are correlated with each other for our rational graphs when they're not in transformational form. We haven't looked at how to find our horizontal asymptote when it's in transformational form. The idea is the same as it was when it's in transformational form, right? Your horizontal asymptote is what happens as you get really high as you go to infinity on the right side and as you go to infinity on the left side. So you're plugging in really, really, really large numbers and really, 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 really small numbers, right? So there's three rules that we have to do and all of them are comparing the degrees of the polynomials on top and bottom or the numerator and denominator. Right? So there's three possibilities. The top is higher, we've got the bottom is higher, and then the degrees match. Okay, so if the top is higher, there's no horizontal, anto uh, a a horizontal asymptote, there is a slant asymptote. Typically, um, if um, we only go over if it's one degree higher, there's a slant asymptote. Technically, there's still a slant asymptote anyways. So regardless of how high, how much higher it is on the top, it, there's always a slant asymptote. Usually, we just look at linear slant asymptotes. I haven't told you how to find a slant asymptote. So for day day, we're just looking at there's no horizontal, but there is a slant. Okay? Um, the reason being for that, if I plug in a really, really large number, right? So if we had something like x cubed over x squared, right? So x cubed is higher, right? So if we plug in a super, super large number and we cube it over a super, super large number squared, right? Notice it will really end up being towards our x, right? When we reduce that, right? So um, that gives us the idea of our slant asymptote. This number is not horizontal. If we look at um, our powers when the bottom is bigger, so if I take x squared over x cubed, right, let's just do a million. So if we do a million squared, right, so a million has six zeros. So if we do a million squared divided by a million cubed, you get 1 times 10 to the negative 6. Which really means that I'm moving this decimal left by 6. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 0, 0, 0, 0, like 0, 0, 0, uh, I lost track of my zeros. That many zeros and then one. So this is really close to zero. So anytime that your power on the bottom is higher, it will beat out the top power, which means you're going to have a relatively small number over a relatively large number. Small over a really large, that's think in terms of like winning the lottery or winning something that you don't have good odds of winning, right? Um, your per possibility is really, really slow or low. It's really close to zero. Right? So that's why when the bottom is higher, our horizontal asymptote goes to zero. You do the same kind of thing with when you would have negative. You would do negative 1 million squared and negative 1 million cubed. So you'd have still a relatively small number over a relatively large number. In this case, it would be negative. Right? So small over really large is still really close to zero, even if you're on the negative side of zero. So that's why we get the bottom is higher goes to y equals zero. If the horizontal, if the degrees match, then what happens is that um, it's the leading coefficients of the top over the bottom, right? And that's because if I had something like 4x squared over 2x squared, notice these two would essentially be the same, right? When I put the same number in them and then it would reduce to the leading coefficients out in front. Even if I have plus some other things here, like 5x minus 4, or plus 2x minus 1, right? These parts right here are not going to make a huge difference as we're getting to really, 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 really large numbers. It'll make a difference close to zero, right? But as we're going to really, really large numbers, this is going to be negligible. So it's going to go towards this ratio of the leading coefficients. 
Okay, so that's the reasoning behind how these three rules happen. So if the top hires there, if the top is higher, there's no horizontal asymptote, but there is a slow slant. Oh, can't speak today. If the bottom is higher, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. If the degrees match, then you take the ratio of the leading coefficients from the top and bottom. And then please remember that your horizontal asymptote you always have written as y equals a number.